Hi everyone. Welcome to another exciting series of Sin Lab podcast. My name is Uche Namadi and I'll be your host. Today we will be talking about genotype testing and sickle cell management. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Today I will be doing an exclusive with the amazing Dr. Olani Oweye. Thank nice you. to meet you or nice to have you here rather than <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so before we proceed, I'd like us to get to know him more and I'll be reading his bio now. So it says here that Dr. Lani Oweye is a graduate of the University of Iloring and a fellow of the West African College of Physicians. With over five years of experience as a consultant hematologist, he currently works with Synlab Nigeria. Dr. Owe is passionate about medical diagnostics, the management of hematological diseases, and imparting knowledge to others. He has a strong dedication to the prevention of sickle cell anemia and serves as the public relations officer for the Association for the Prevention of Sickle Cell Anemia of Nigeria, APOSCAN, an NGO primarily based in Ilori, Nigeria. Wow. <laughs> As an advocate for sickle cell awareness, Dr. Wei has written several poems. Yeah. Ah. Poems. To support initiatives raising awareness about the disease. I'm coming back to the poems. Oh, including really? <laughs> including a platform created by Nigerian poet Funke Awodia. That's amazing. Dr. Wei believes in the importance of health education as a key tool for disease prevention and improving health behaviors. He envisions a healthier Nigeria and a healthier Africa. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wei, this is amazing. Oh, really? Wow. So you are a, a consultant hematologist by day and a poet by night. Something like that. That's nice. So boy, I should come and be doing my work in the day and then DJ at night. Like <laughs> you are giving me ideas. Another. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to have you here today. Oh, same here. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So in this first episode, we will be talking about understanding genotype testing and why it matters. Once again, do not forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. So Dr. Wei, I want to start by asking what is genotype testing and why is it important? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, genotype basically means analysis of an individual's DNA to actually check for their genetic makeup. Okay. So it's very, very important because um, all, I, all an individual is about is the, their DNA. Okay. Whatever an individual looks like, you know, or, or functions like, it's is, is or, you know, all in the DNA. Yeah. So the DNA is actually very, 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 very important. It's also very, very important because the DNA actually enables you to detect, you know, there's so many diseases out there that have, you know, genetic basis. That's so, interesting because yes. I was going to ask you how <laughs> it affects a person's health. Uh -oh, so good. you're already on it, so just no, carry so on. Fine. <laughs> so it actually helps you to be able to diagnose diseases, to be mm -hmm. able to detect disease patterns mm -hmm. in families. And it also actually helps you to also monitor a patient, you understand, sure. because mm -hmm. you have a slew of diseases okay. that have, you know, genetic bases. So basically, um, analyzing an individual's DNA, which what genotype is all about, mm -hmm. actually enables you to know this, to have like a very specific information okay. about an individual. Hmm. So... That's amazing. Can you help us with the different types of genotypes? Because as a student, I knew about AASSS. -A -S -S. Okay. AASSS. -A -S -S. Yeah, I think that's all I knew <laughs> as a student. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually assumed you meant hemoglobin genotypes because, mm -hmm, of course. Yeah, hemoglobin yeah, genotypes. So good. Um, well, um, I think one of the things I should add with, you know, while I was... Um, defining what genotype is all about mm -hmm. is it also allows you to be able to see variations in, okay. you know, um, genetic make makeups. Okay. So basically, so now going back to the question that you asked, mm -hmm. um, the normal genotype, mm -hmm. normal hemoglobin genotype mm -hmm. is AA. Mm -hmm. And every other thing is a variant. Wow. Ooh. And uh, yes. Please repeat it again for the people at the oh, back. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> the normal hemoglobin genotype mm -hmm. is hemoglobin AA. 
That's okay. the normal. So every other thing is a variant. So, and then you have a lot of variants. You have hmm. hundreds of them. And the list keeps growing every day. Uh, so, but of course, the common ones that we know is the S variant, uh -huh. the C variant. Uh -huh. And then, of course, you have the D variant also. Uh -huh. You have G variant. You have O. You have um, E. Huh. You have O Arab and all sorts of variants. So, so many variants. But of course, the common ones that we know most people know in this part of the world would be the S variant and mm. then, of course, the C variant. So what I'm trying to say is you have lots of hemoglobin genotypes yeah. because the only normal one is hemoglobin AA. Mm -hmm. And every other thing that is not A is a variant. So an a variant as a result of an issue, either a mutation, usually a mutation. Okay. So basically... That's, wow. That's just... So the thing is, when I saw you here, I knew you were going to school us. <laughs> because, oh, 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 oh. let me stop it there. Nah, <laughs> let me stop it there. So I would like to know, at what stage in life should someone get tested oh. for hemoglobin genotype? I think that's also hemoglobin electrophoresis mm. in the medical term. Well, there's a bit of difference in that. Oh, wow. You know, Another so, schooling. <laughs> the hemoglobin electrophoresis yeah. makes you, um, is basically like an assessment of the phenotype. You know, huh. um, your genetic makeup determines your outlook. Uh -huh. So hemoglobin electrophoresis is what analyzes the outlook, <sighs> like the phenotype how you look okay so and it's your genotype the yeah, you the genetic makeup makeup that actually determines the phenotype so okay. hemoglobin electrophoresis basically is just like analyzing the phenotype you know of you know hemoglobins huh. in the blood then the genotype delves specifically into the dna you know the genetic makeup and huh. that's what it delves into huh. so um you asked the question so yes. what's that question again uh, before we, before we veer off because <laughs> you know they had us <laughs> i thought at what stage in life should okay. one get tested like because i see most times i hear um mothers who are curious okay. taking their newborns okay to be tested Good. so at what stage or age in life let me put it that way should one get tested Okay. As early as newborns. Oh, wow. Yes. As early as newborns. In the United States, it's mandatory huh. for you to test newborns for, you know, um, hemoglobin, to do hemoglobin genotype for newborns. And I think in like 50 states in the United States, it's compulsory for you to actually do that. So, so as early as, you know, being a newborn. So for me, that means like you can do it at the beginning of life. Hmm. And you the know, tests are accurate. They will say from no cradle the to the grave. So cradle, that's the ideal time you should oh, actually, wow. you know, get to do it. Because, I mean, doing your genotype, mm -hmm. you know, your DNA analysis, I said it gives you specific information mm -hmm. about an individual. Mm -hmm. And the best way to actually beat things, to actually um, beat diseases is when you know and when you know early. Hmm. You understand, you know, wow. so basically, so it's better to actually do the, the test. The ideal time to actually do it is when a child is born. And of course, you cannot get to, to do it as at that time, then you should do it as early as possible. They should get to know early. You know, some years ago, we used to be, I used to be part of, before I really became very committed with ApoScan, I think mm -hmm. during my residency years. Mm -hmm. um, ApoScan is Professor Adewi's brainchild. Mm -hmm. He's a retired professor of hematology. And then, you know, he would carry all of us, then would go to schools. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what he had in mind was they need to know early before they start falling in love. So we go to secondary schools and then oh, we'll, wow. we'll talk to them about genotype, you know, we'll tell them, let them understand what genotypes are, mm. do, you know, offer some form of health education so that they will be aware and encourage them, mm -hmm. you know, with their teachers to actually get to do their, know their genotypes early because we don't want them getting to know when they are falling in love. Mm. And, and you know, their head, things. once they are dead, they are dead. <laughs> exactly. Not seeing where you want to tell them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I could remember then too, we would always go to the camp, mm -hmm. the NYC camp, oh. during, you know, the three weeks of orientation. Oh my because, you know, there's a yeah. lot of loving up, you know, that happens there. So we go God. there then to talk to them about it. So Please, you're, yeah. you're taking me yeah, out basically. of the, the trajectory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that because oh, sure. there are some, uh, there, in one of the later episodes, we'll be discussing more on, okay. on that. So, um, okay, I think I should even bring this up now. Can we talk about the common misconceptions? Oh. Yeah. 
about genotype testing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll probably will start with the most common misconception. Okay. The um, issue of, I, I, I really don't know if that really relates, but uh-huh. I think I want to actually bring it up. Okay. The issue of um, abikus. Or huh. Ganges, huh. you understand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we've had it in history where people, you know, keep giving birth to children uh-huh. who will die before they grow old. Some yeah. will die before they become toddlers and things like that. And then oh, wow. you had this, you know, um, um, misconception about it that they were abikus, they were Ganges and all that. But with the advent of science, we huh. got to discover that Perhaps a whole lot of, you know, these children were actually sickle cell, you know, anemia patients because those days there was no testing. Yes. No one tested for anything. And no treatment. No treatment because yeah. all you needed to, to do before you actually got married was, okay, look into the family of the person you were going to marry. Mm. They always run mad in that family. <laughs> they have a particular <laughs> secret in that family and then do some divination and then they will tell you that, oh, this woman would give us a lot of children and things like that. And oh so, and I guess... No those, way. <laughs> so I guess those days children were a mm-hmm. thing. Marriages were all mm-hmm. about children, mm-hmm. you yes. know, so... Once you hear that, oh, she's going to give back to a lot of children for you. So the man goes ahead. And you then, don't say. <laughs> and then hey, they, so, they should and come then, now. now. <laughs> you find a lot of AS <laughs> folks, you know, getting yeah. involved and then having a lot of C class. But then those mm. days, no one knew. Yes. And then, Ignorance. you know, so it was there. And then, so that's one of the very, very common misconceptions about it. Then another thing I've actually seen in practice, even nowadays, is the fact that I think the proliferation of I'm a faith person, but oh. then, you know, okay. Nigeria is a highly religious society. Yes, amen. And um, some people still feel that as long as God has said, mm-hmm. there's no need for them to test. Okay. So because God has said, so even if they go ahead and then they do testing and then he's, the, what the test reveals is against what they actually believed. Mm. Um, there's this tendency for them not to believe because they will feel, oh, okay, um, God has said this, then let me go ahead and do it. The doctor is just... So sometimes doctors and you know health interventions are sometimes seen as anti-faith. Okay. And as such, you see a whole lot of people who will still go ahead and then, you know, jettison and... Um, uh, defy whatever mm-hmm. you know results your the, the, um, the genotype has shown, and they will go, go ahead and marry. We still see that a lot these days. However, that is reducing because I know several denominations where you have to show your results, and mm-hmm. no matter how spiritual, anointed both parties are, mm-hmm. um, if you are both AS, if you both have the sickle cell trait, no way. Um, there's churches that will not join you. So oh, wow. I think that's one of the you know. Um, um, practices I've seen also, cultural beliefs, you know, uh, and practices I've seen, you know, in this, recently, in recent times about it, where people are still stuck to their faith and oh. then they don't really want to believe that you need to actually join genotype testing before you say, yes, I do, things yeah. like that. So I think those are the two things basically that, you know, I've seen very commonly with, you know, the issue of genotype testing, oh, you know, and all That's that. enlightening. So I wanted to um, talk about, I think you, you've already touched on it, but... How can genotype testing help in family planning and reducing sickle cell disease? Okay. Um, before I answer that question, I think I missed out something. Okay. You actually asked about the accuracy of, mm-hmm. you know, the yeah, test. Yeah, during the stage at which you test exactly. how accurate. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say something on that. I think nowadays we have it a whole lot better. And that is why we can actually see a whole lot more variants yes. outside of S yes. and C. Yes. You know, earlier on, we we there were so many cases where people would go and do, you know, their genotypes and then they get results. And some years down the line, they found out that they're getting contradictory results. Yes. You understand. But nowadays, um, that's not so common anymore because now we have methods that mm-hmm. can actually detect and quantify you know, the uh, hemoglobin, you know, um, constituents in the blood, okay. even in a newborn. Okay. There are certain machines now that can actually determine 
seen hemoglobin variants even in the newborn hmm. things that we don't know about years before so hmm. you have we have very accurate tests nowadays that are very sensitive and not specific in the diagnosis of you know um, um hemoglobin variants i mean the detection rather of hmm. hemoglobin variants in oh, our wow. water view wow. so yes so the that's accuracy that. part we are good to oh, go yeah, we're good to go about that. okay so family so, planning Oh, good. And reducing um, sickle cell cases. No, oh, good. Um, family planning is all about choice. Uh -huh. You understand? And uh, it's just choosing when you want to get pregnant and how you want it to be and the, the number of children you want to have. So I'll actually be touching on the choice part of it. Now, mm -hmm. with advancement in science, mm -hmm. um, 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 a parent who is a sickle cell carrier can actually determine and detect and can actually determine, you know, the genotype of the, the children that they want to have. Hmm. We have pre-implantation genetic testing, nice. you know, as part of IVF, where nice. you go and then um, during the procedure, the procedure basically analyzes mm -hmm. you know you know the the genetics of yeah. you know the embryo and yes. and then you can actually determine you know and choose you know the right kind of genotype uh -uh. you know you know for your choose. yeah for your baby you understand and then you have um That's also impressive. um the um, prenatal diagnosis check okay that of course there are a lot of people who are actually doing that mm -hmm. you know in, in some of our metropolitan of, of our cities these days find a lot of people coming to do prenatal you know diagnosis and yeah. then prenatal diagnosis enables them to know you know, you know, the, the genotype of the unborn child and then, you know, take the necessary steps that they actually need to take in order to either mitigate against that or ensure that, well, um, they are well prepared hmm. for whatever it is, you know, is, is coming. So um, genotype testing actually affords you choice. Hmm. you know, in determining the genotype of your offspring. Hmm. So for me, it's, 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 that's just, that's just, that's just it. It's, it, it's one of the key things that it actually does, especially when it comes to the area of, you know, family planning and all that. Wow. Thank you very much, Dr. Wei. This has been a very interesting episode. So my dear listeners, you have heard it all about genotype and why it matters. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Join us in the next episode. Don't go away.